This is the Grow My Clinic podcast by Clinic Mastery, where we help you deliver amazing client experiences to grow your clinic. Well, welcome back to another episode of the Grow My Clinic podcast. My name is Jack O'Brien, your host. Thank you for joining us for another episode today. And we are back on with the guests. There's been some solo and dual shows for a while, but today we have a guest to join us, Simon Taylor from Rehab Guru, which is an exercise prescription software for clinics based in the UK with clients and clinics all over the world. I'm really excited about Rehab Guru. Simon, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Good to be here. Awesome. Well, before we dive into Rehab Guru and some of the nuts and bolts, the mechanics of how the software works, you juggle quite a few balls. You spin a few plates at the moment. You wear a few different hats. Can you tell us a little bit about your background, especially in the military, and then what's led to now a tech company for health professionals? Yeah, sure. So I've been in the Air Force now since 2003. I joined as a physical training instructor, which then led into doing a exercise rehab instructor. So we would work with physiotherapists in this kind of group therapy setting. And really that led to the frustration of having to give a group of 15 patients these exercise programs. So we would call them uh, specifics. We would have a group of patients with us for a, a three-week residential course. And then we would find ourselves having to swap out bits of photocopied paper, sort of rifling through filing cabinets of all of these overly photocopied exercise sheets. Yeah, exactly. So um, it was really born out of of that frustration. And this is like 2008. So not really as, uh, so tech wasn't as accessible as, as, as what it is now. So, quite a a slow start from humble beginnings um i then uh went away and did some some full-time training because i was fancying myself as a potential olympian i didn't go as planned but competed around the world for uh, you know a few events and it was really during that time that i taught myself to to program and code during this kind of forced rest period so from there, I took over the development of the app, and this is now sort of 2013-14. Sure. Uh, grew that to be uh, sort of a good beta version. We brought on a developer in the States who then gave us our far more kind of production-ready versions. And then I've now moved on. I'm a commissioned officer in the Air Force now and also studying a master's in information capability management, which sounds really boring, I know, but it is really those kind of mix of kind of a sports rehab background, now a really nerdy IT background and uh, kind of all cobbled together into a product that we're, we're trying to uh, give to people that are solving the same issue as us, as, you know, really trying to deliver a professional Okay. rehab program to people and that is in essence what we're about trying to give a, a more polished product to our patients yeah yeah i love it and not to mention juggling a one-year-old home as well <laughs> yep. yeah yeah, yeah. so <laughs> well they say sleep when you're dead which might not be too long but <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's a few and far between with kids uh no i love it mate and i think your your personal background of the the physical training instructing through to exercise and rehab an athlete yourself and then working in some of those public private mixed environments like the military and nhs for the for those based in the uk uh, positions you i guess in quite a unique space to be able to understand the needs of exercise prescription software to move away from the photocopies and the transparencies through to an app or cloud-based solution to deliver exercises and I love the fact with with Rehab Guru that there's a few different unique features especially around the branding and white labeling that enable clinics to really customize the journey can you speak a little bit to why that customization is important for exercise prescription 
Yeah, sure. So um, I always use the analogy of, you know, people attribute the, the quality of something by how it looks. You know, be okay. it uh, like I wrote a blog post about this recently about, you know, uh, people desire an Apple product or a, a, you know, nice car, be it BMW or Audi or whatever. So quality, be it a treatment plan, rehab program. And if they're attributing the quality of something by how it looks, you give them a five minute stick man diagram on a scrap of piece of paper then the quality of that is reflected upon you as a therapist. And I know that people have, you know, pretty, I've drawn some pretty awesome stick men in my time, <laughs> but, um, you know, ultimately what they leave the clinic with is a scrap of paper. And right. if that is something that when they look at their exercise program, it's all professionally branded with your logo, not, not just a logo in the, you know, kind of top left of the program, but, Actually, the colors, the fonts, the um, the imagery that's around it, so it's fully uh, kind of in line with your brand. And right. I think that that is kind of a, a business outreach uh, thing sure. as well as, you know, people actually believing in you as, a, as an organization, you as a company, and also the therapist. I think it's such an important point, Simon. It, it makes me think about, you could be the best exercise prescriber on the planet, but if it's done on a piece of paper with a stick figure, the perception for the clients on the other end or the patient is that you don't know what you're talking about. And so it's, a, it's really managing perceptions, right? And I think about Daniel Gibbs, one of the founders of Clinic Mastery, who serves beautiful herbal tea on a silver platter in their welcome room. And the comments from the patients are, oh, wow, you guys must be really good podiatrists if you serve this brand of herbal tea. Obviously, it's got nothing to do with how good you are. And likewise, branding and colours can be seen as non-clinical or irrelevant. But I would agree with you and, and emphasise to clinic owners that the client experience around branding really makes a difference to how patients perceive you. And then correct me if I'm wrong, Simon, and I'm sure the data backs this up. If patients perceive you as an expert and enjoy the the visual experience of your exercises they're probably more likely to adhere and probably more likely to get better outcomes in the clinic is that fair yeah yeah absolutely i mean the the compliance figures that we've we've seen there's no kind of clinical trials or any peer-reviewed studies on it or anything but you know anecdotally people's adherence to training to training programs are you know way better and, you know, we're looking at being able to, so you can track all of this using our client app. So right. therapists can see when they've, when they've added a session on their particular program, they've tracked their pain, wellness scores. So that kind of ad- adherence can firstly be, be checked and monitored. But what we're seeing is that they don't necessarily need any, any prompts in that. It's just that they've got a tool that's sat in a pocket that they're, pulling out of the pocket and checking Facebook or Twitter every every five minutes is it's just a small step to then changing the app to viewing their exercise program. So the the kind of convenience factor to that coupled with it, you know, sure. being, being a far more professional product definitely does drive better compliance. Sure, sure. Speak to me a little bit more about that accessibility and obviously the web portal is, you know, that's the the favorite child that's where everything lives but i know that your app is accessible across all devices and platforms tell me why that's important yeah so um we've found that uh, north america uk australia have been predominantly kind of ios based so apple products but then there's been a, a huge demand for for android certainly in you know other other parts of the world sure. where getting hold of an 800 pound iPhone is, is not, not accessible. So sure. we offer the exact same experience on iOS and on, on Android. We don't kind of offer a lesser experience on any. So that's what we really pride ourselves on is that you can move seamlessly from your web portal to your mobile to your iPad uh, or any other tablet. And you'll get the same experience, all seamlessly kind of synced and, and connected. So we 
utilizing just really modern web technology in order to do that. And sure, sure, sure. Um, some, some new cool things coming out sort of progressive web apps, which allow you to install just a website on your phone and get a really quick, seamless experience. So benefited from the kind of bleeding edge of uh, web technology and that's allowed us to do it. So just gives yeah, the customer a really uh, good so from experience a, regardless of device. Yeah, brilliant. From a practitioner perspective, there's preloaded videos and exercises. Then speak to us a little bit about the customization capacity. Can we add in our own exercises? Can we template programs within practitioners within the clinic? How does that work? Yeah, so firstly, yeah, you can create your own exercises. The mobile app's really good for this because you've obviously got a camera and a microphone and things. So if you're recording sort of voice over videos and things, then that works great. You can take still, still images from your photo library or take them in, in real time as well. Um, so that you can create your own library. And in fact, some people have, you know, rather than setting themselves up with a YouTube channel and, and sending people to there, they're, they're using our hosting platform, our uploading kind of system. And they're, they're shooting in almost like a studio, like, like we would shoot our, our library videos. But they've got their logos in the background, they're watermarking them. And, you know, we just take a back seat and... Uh, let them let them use our platform because it, it's awesome. You know they're, they're creating wow. their their own library, and we have what's called a like a working palette, and we give the the, the therapist or the user free reign within that. So they can add, remove exercises, load from templates, add from sort of media from camera. Then they can choose to publish that in whatever way. Uh, they want. They could send it by email. They could uh, just save it to a client. They can then download it as a PDF. So really trying to cater for a broad spectrum of, of patients, everything from the really tech savvy, you know, kind of group of people that are happy with smartphones and so on, down to, uh, you know, kind of the elderly population who would be happy walking out with a printed piece of paper. That's great. That's great. Tell me, I guess you get a, a privileged view of how all different clinics and therapists are using the software. This is a double-edged question, but what are some of the things that you see really progressive owners doing? Or what are some of the mistakes that you see the average clinic owner making when using your platform? Yeah, sure. So um, where we're seeing some really surprising use cases is in the, the, the setup. So people will choose to create very small templates of commonly prescribed exercises. So it might be, say, a warm-up, cool-down, mobility set, strength set, splitting up body parts. And then what they will do is make them almost like building blocks for the program. So they dive into the template screen. They'll, they'll load one, load the next, load all the next, and just fill this kind of working palette with exercises. They'll dive straight into the settings, trim the fat, and then, you know, rearrange them, quickly assign their parameters, reps, sets, whatever they're, sure. they're adding, and then they're prescribing. And then the prescription ID is a, is a really valuable thing. So it's a unique 10-digit number. And... You can use this ID to load from a previous prescription. And people are getting really clever with, with this, this ID as to sharing that with, with other users. And then as a, in a clinic setting or like what we do with the Ministry of Defence where you've got uh, sort of 650 users that are all within the same organisation, sure. they will use our share key system. So they have a number of protocols that are pushed out from the center of excellence mm -hmm. and people can subscribe to that share key and then you can start to move around the, the exercises that are pushed out from the center of excellence and then you can just subscribe to this feed and everyone's then got kind of a kind of collaborative access to a number of different databases wow. of, of templates that's amazing i love it and uh i guess the opposite is true for common mistakes that average clinic owners make in, in not accessing those collaborative opportunities and manually updating prescriptions each time. Would that be fair? Yeah. Um, 
I think where we see some of the, the problems and speaking to our users is not necessarily in how they would use the software, it's more how they're choosing to use it in practice. So how are they, they say, I've got a half hour appointment, how, how on earth can I prescribe an exercise program within half an hour when I'm doing my sure. assessment and some small treatment within that? Really, we're, we're saying, well, maybe you don't have to do the prescription then. Maybe you could just email it later in the day. Maybe they've had enough of a session, they just want to leave the clinic. Uh, I'll follow up with my program. You've got another interaction with, with them either the next, the next day or, or, or later in the evening. So I think it's more of the, the workflow issues where people are changing traditional practice to include digital tools and changing their workflow is, is probably the biggest mistake or, or hurdle that people are struggling to get over at the moment. Sure, makes sense. I love it. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about what's to come? What should clinic owners be thinking about? Maybe are they features that are coming for Rehab Guru or what's, what's ahead in the exercise prescription tech space in the next six to 24 months? Yeah, sure. Um, so we're kind of pushing along on a, on a number of fronts uh, for a start. We've got a new, uh, new therapist app coming out, a new client app coming out in probably Q3 and 4 of this year. And what that client app is going to allow people to do is kind of customize the, the data that they'll be collecting. So it might be, so currently we've got pain and wellness, which are two metrics that may work for people that they may not. We'll be able to customize what you collect. So it might be sort of RPE or anything else that you would choose to, to collect. So that gives the freedom to be able to, to gather whatever data you choose to. And aside from that, we're pushing along with an, uh, a number of other integrations. We've already got a good few integrations with electric health record products. Kind of horizon scanning on, on that, that's really going to kind of open up with different protocols that are coming out, such as uh, Fire HL7. And we've kind of explored all of those we can connect via fire so that's really interesting as to how we'll then be able to just move healthcare data around so that's where we we see things going and certainly that interconnectivity between healthcare platforms rather than us connecting with 101 different ones we'll hopefully position ourselves with a kind of de facto standard and then everyone will be able to share healthcare data. So I think that's where the future is going. Well, that's, that's going to be exciting to work amongst that. And on that integration front, with most of the common practice management software, Clinico, Nucle, Core Plus, et cetera, they're all integrated? Yep. Yep, we are integrated with, with all of those guys that you just mentioned there. Um, the clinic software integrates to, to different degrees. At the entry level, you're looking at synchronizing your, your patients. Uh, some of the tools do allow us to upload the exercise prescription. So when you prescribe the exercises using our software, we will automatically create an entry in the patient notes, including sure. exercise list, rep sets, link to the exercise prescription, prescription ID, kind of essential data that you would have to have in a uh, compliant medical note. Sure. Love it. And if clinic owners or therapists wanted to check out more about Rehab Guru, where do we send them? Where do they go? Rehabguru.com. That is where you'll find everything, including uh, where to sign up. Uh, we're pushing out stuff on our blogs and also on, on Twitter. We've got, uh, uh, we're at rehab underscore guru. Or myself is Cy underscore Taylor, which is, if you want to get really nerdy, then follow me on Twitter because that's where all the, t- the tech <laughs> geekery happens. So, uh, but, uh, I think we've got plenty of those, plenty of those in our audience. <laughs> and it's funny, I think, you know, as yeah. clinic owners continue and progress through their journey, obviously we're all enamored by the clinical sense of what we do, but some of this tech is fascinating from a clinic owner, business owner perspective. So uh, who knows, you might pick up a few new Twitter followers off the back of it. <laughs> yeah that'd be good that'd be good I love it well thank you so much Simon it's been brilliant to have you on the Grow My Clinic podcast listeners you'll be able to grab all the links that we've mentioned there to check out Rehab Guru 
and anything else we've spoken about today over at clinicmastery.com forward slash podcast. Over there, you can also check out the links to review and rate us on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever else you listen to this podcast. And you'll also be able to jump into our free Grow Your Clinic mini course. Uh, that's a brilliant opportunity for you to pick up some systems to implement into your clinic straight away for free that will make a massive difference to your client retention and clinic experience. Again, Simon, thank you for joining us. Any parting words of wisdom for our listeners? Oh, you've caught me off guard there. Passing words of wisdom. Um, no, just, just download the app. Give us lots and lots of feedback. Uh, it is the kind of community-driven app. So uh, give us lots of feedback and then we'll be able to tailor the product to, to what you guys need. So, But yeah, thanks very much for your time, Jack. My pleasure, Simon. I'm sure we'll take you up on that opportunity for feedback. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, listeners, for sharing your time with us and we look forward to bringing you another episode again really soon. This is the Grow My Clinic podcast by Clinic Mastery, where we help you deliver amazing client experiences to grow your clinic.